What's up guys, Joe at Momentum Works. Today we're gonna take this $1,400 whole set turbo VGT actuator and turn it in to a pile of garbage. Stay tuned. All right guys, so if you're familiar with VGT turbos and basically if you're running any modern truck, whether it's an ISX, an ISL, an ISM, you know, any of the pack car, MX-13s, MX-11s, MAC, MP-8s, MP-7s, they're all running a whole set VGT turbo that has these electronic actuators on it. And they go bad because, you know, that's just what happens when you put more technology into trucks. And, you know, when your actuator goes bad, you might be inclined to rebuild it. And we thought, man, maybe that's a good idea. And while you physically can, it is possible to rebuild these. Um, it's also possible that I could turn this shop into you know, a meth lab, but just because I can doesn't mean I should. And that's why I'm here to tell you that just because you can potentially rebuild an actuator, it's a total waste of time. Let's jump into it. All right, so the whole reason that we embarked on this is that we had an actuator come back to us for a return and this plug ended up looking like this. So we decided, hey, we can buy this plug on the internet. So we went to the internet, we bought this new harness and we said, hey, we're gonna put this in, no problem. So we took all these bolts off. There's a kajillion of them. And you get this cover off and you're like, well, hmm, shit, I can't do anything with that. And this is our first failure point. We see that there's these two gaskets. And basically what happens in the actuator here, guys, is that coolant comes in through these two ports, the in and the out. And what it does is it comes around and it cools this motor, keeps this motor cool. So this actuator is actually coolant cooled, coolant cooled, whatever. Um, so you have these two O-rings that come around, and this is your first failure point on one of these VGT actuators, at least the first failure point we're going to look at. So then we took all these bolts out, and we separated. Oh, it's already falling apart, guys, because I already took this apart. And we ended up with this, which was this board, originally in one piece before we got a hold of it. Um, and then we see that we have a, another o-ring here so we have one o-ring two o-ring three o-rings so these are all failure points we have these two gears here which there's not a whole lot of failure point here but there are bearings there's one bearing and two bearing which are failure points these gear sets ride on these bearings so these are all things guys that you would want to replace if you're rebuilding the actuator so you know that there's a lot of different failure points now remember, the whole reason we embarked on this is that this harness that we have here, this is a new one, this got damaged, so we wanted to replace this. And looking at these pins, I thought this would be a simple plug and play, but it really just wasn't. These pins come through, and you can see that they're like locked in here with this rubber grommet. But the problem is, and we're gonna pull the board off here, they're soldered on the back and the front. And like I said, not to say that it can't be done, I'm just saying for your average mechanic, this is gonna be something that would be pretty difficult to do and probably not worth your time. So when we got to that point and we realized we weren't gonna be able to save this actuator, we decided to pry the board off and we noticed that there's all kinds of, you know, goop that was holding this board on. You know, to do this repair correctly, you'd have to remove this board and it would just be very time consuming and something that you would probably, you know, wanna be a professional or somebody that does this for a living or else it wouldn't really be worth it. So moving on, we have more failure points. We have another bearing here and this is where the motor is itself. Um, so the motor can burn out or this bearing could go bad. So the point that I'm really trying to make here, guys, is that there's a ton of failure points on these actuators. So if you were to, you know, say, hey, I'm going to rebuild my actuator, there's so many things to replace in here to make sure that you have a good running product that it's probably not worth it. Guys, and I figure this is a good time to mention, when you get a VGT actuator code on the dash or on the ECM or whatever, it doesn't necessarily mean that the actuator is bad. The VGT turbo itself could be seized or it could be the actuator. So when you get a VGT code, it's important to troubleshoot. Is it your actuator or is it the actual turbo itself? This can be easily done by pulling the actuator off the turbo and making sure that the arm on the, act on the turbo itself fully swings both ways and it's going smooth. It's not hanging up. If that's the case, then you know it's your actuator. But if that turbo is locking up, then you know it's your turbo. The problem is a turbo that's locking up and not allowing this actuator to move its gear back and forth could damage the actuator and then you end up with a damaged turbo and another damaged actuator. We'll do another video on you know VGT turbo failures 
We're just gonna focus on actuators here, but before we dive into it, I figured it's important to know that these two things coincide together. So can you rebuild a VGT actuator? Absolutely. In my opinion, should you rebuild a turbo actuator? No. If you're someone who works with circuit boards or if you start a company remanufacturing these actuators, you know, it might be worth it. But for a guy that's an over operator or if you're running a shop, things like that, the time it's gonna take you and the frustration level to rebuild this actuator, to have something that's not even gonna be as reliable, and, to, and these are unreliable at the start, it's just not worth rebuilding these actuators. You're really just better off buying a new actuator and sending the truck on its way. I've always been a firm believer in that, you know, I get paid to go to work to do what I do well, and then I pay someone to go to work to do what they do well. And this is one of those things. If you drive a truck or if you fix trucks or if you're a fleet manager, whatever it is, your time is not well spent repairing one of these VGT actuators. You're better off, you know, buying one that's already remanned, which, you know, whole set remands them, Cummins remands them, whoever, or some independent remanufacturing, let them deal with the headache. Or just buy a new one, put it on the truck, and get back to doing what you do to make money. Guys, I hope you liked this video. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this video because, you know, you should be able to rebuild things. And yes, you can rebuild it, but it's just not worth it. I found basically all the parts that I would need to rebuild that actuator, and that's why we embarked on this. But it's really just, you know, not something that I think is worth your time. So, Stephen, would you like some chips? I would love a chip. Thank you so much.